Hi, Zhao. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. So basically, what we're trying to do is like we're building this platform where like we have a lot of audience in China, like Chinese-speaking people, and they have no access to a lot of like great talent like you, you know, making music and have great credits. So we're trying to build the bridge, introducing artists like you to the Asian markets. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad to be to be able to talk to to Asia. China. That's great. So, you, yeah. So you were telling me like you have never worked with any Asian artists before, right? Um, like when I first started off in music, like I, I worked on a song with Boy Wanda for Manny Pacquiao, like years ago, like a decade ago. Yeah. I was just a teenager, so that's that's the only experience I have in the Asian market. I know Manny Pacquiao is huge in the Philippines. And you know, you know, in the last four years, the, the rap, like hip hop music, has been a big trend for China. Because because、yeah, yeah. we started a show in China called the Rap of China, so there are quite a few artists like Chris Wu. Before that,、yeah. pe people thought like hip hop music is very underground. Interesting, man. Yeah, music's universal, man. I know people all over the world are enjoying all types of different genres, so it makes perfect sense. Yes. So how did you start your journey? Like I know you started when you were teenager or something. Uh, and I started, I started. Doing music when I was super duper young, and then just started hanging out at studios when I was like twelve years old. Yeah, I guess even before that, I wanted to be a rapper, so I was just like rapping at like the neighborhood like ice cream spot near the house when I was like eight years old, saying、wow. words I didn't know what they meant, like just rapping bars out here on Eminem or whatever, writing my own songs, and then I guess when I was like twelve, <laughs> kind of realized that like maybe rap is not for me. But I still wanted to do something. Continued to write, and I ended up working on、uh, designing my MySpace pages. Okay. So I was just like building out MySpace pages with the banners, like making gifs, hustling, meeting artists in the in the in the city in Toronto. Yeah. This is like this is like mid early two thousand. So like Drake hadn't blown up yet. He was on Degrassi. Like it's a much different time. The biggest、yeah. Toronto rapper ever was probably. Cardinal official at the time, like there wasn't an infrastructure. It was virtually impossible to break in the states, and nobody was looking at Toronto producers whatsoever. Okay. So I was making MySpace pages and、uh, managing an artist、uh, named Richie Sosa,、okay. uh, who Drake ended up being a big fan of, and then I also was working with this、uh, management company that was managing Boy Wonder and T Minus and.、Um, Couple other big producers in the city at the time. Okay. So I started naturally making beats, playing around with it as I started getting older, because I was like running one is MySpace and helping send beats around. Like I actually placed、uh, in high school, I placed、uh, congratulations on Drake's "So Far Gone" tape for Mega Man because Drake was the homie. And、um, yeah, so it just kind of evolved from there, and I started writing songs because we needed references and engineering,、yeah. recording it because we. We just needed it, you know what I mean. There wasn't an infrastructure in Canada. There wasn't much there. So, I guess fast forward a few years, Boy Wonder blew up as a producer with Drake, and he signed me his company, Boy Wonder Productions, Wonder Boy Productions. Okay. Still,、um, I was very lucky to build with him while I was in university at the same time at Ryerson、yeah. for radio and television arts. So I kind of got like two. Two doses of education at the same time: the music industry、yeah. and like university. I guess the music industry stuff is more of the skills I use every day. But I'm still grateful to have gone to university and achieved that as well. Cool. But、um, yeah, so I just kind of kind of evolved from there. Ended up just being signed to Wanda,、uh, one of my closest friends, and really learning from him and being able to get in the studio with a lot of great artists and just hone my skills. And then eventually, like building a, a like. Coming across some other great mentors like、uh, Stephen Cosmeni at Cos,、mm -hmm. who's now one of the biggest producers in in pop music. So、right. I was able to learn from a lot of talented people, and I'm very grateful for what I've been exposed to. It's given me some unique abilities in the music industry that I'm, you know, very lucky to have experienced at such a young age. So I was looking at your credits. So you got a、yeah. Grammy nomination in 2016 with the、yeah. song with the Kend Kendrick Lamar, right? So how how did that come about? So I started、uh, I started a record with Cause.、Um, 
kind of some guitars he was playing, and then uh, I flipped this sample he had, and I was playing it for Wanda, and Wanda heard it. And at the time, Wanda had been working with Kendrick pretty closely. We, I'd actually came to L.A. with Wanda a few yeah. times to work with Kendrick, who's a stand-up guy, one of the best, very hard worker in the studio. No one's around. It's just him. He's locked in, zoned in, yeah. gives everybody the same respect. I say Kendrick's one of the, the most humble, hardworking people I've come across in the right. music industry. But yeah, so I played one of this track. He uh, put some new drums on it, and we uh, the rest is history. I mean, he sent it to Kendrick, and that was the one that ended up landing. I, I played a small part on it, but I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be involved in that song. Cause it's kind of oh, historic, sure. I guess. It, especially um, people refer to it a lot in the current climate, and it, it, it's had a real positive impact, I think, on music. Great. I'm very grateful for that opportunity. Great, yeah. And right now you're working on your own artist project too right you can yeah. share a little bit of that yeah yeah for sure so um i guess being a producer songwriter you, people don't realize you make so much music like yeah i have thousands of songs on my computer like okay. thousands thousands of beats yeah and you're kind of playing a lottery you know there's been a lot of big artists that have cut my music my songs yeah and for whatever reason those songs don't make it to the finish line not because they're not great songs but just because you know if you catch an artist too early on in their cycle or they change they change directions right. or maybe the politics didn't line up or for whatever reason yep. so i have all this music and i just feel like it's time for me to kind of control my own destiny yep. and just put it out there and see what i can do like i really like making i really like building brands out you know and yep. i want to have the opportunity to just try try this for myself because betting on artists especially new artists is a gamble too and yep. not any artist the release is going to go well so I just feel like, you know, the opportunity is there in the world that we're living that like yeah. you can put music out, build it out the way you want and see it to the finish line how you want. And exactly. Just, keep, just yeah. keep doing it. It doesn't cost me money to make my music. Obviously of it costs money to yeah. finish it, mix and master it, upload it, pay for marketing, but the the actual act of creating music for me is not a costly endeavor. Yeah. So me and my boy Norman Perry, who's super duper talented. Mm -hmm. Legend and legend definitely in the R and B space. A lot of people, a lot of fall like he's got a lot of fall, a lot of diehard fans. We've yeah. uh, made a new project called Spirit Saver that I'm very excited about. And we're hoping to launch it in like um, hopefully the end of the fourth quarter is, is the goal, wow. and okay. I think it's going to be pretty unique. And I know you're working on your fashion streetwear yeah. too. Do you want to share a little bit about that too? Sure. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, this is this is your random plants. Um, me and my partner, we started this brand. Um, she's a very, very talented um, designer and yeah. artist as well. And we started it a year ago as just an outlet to reflect our creative ideas and build a brand, but also to um, do a little bit of activism uh, yeah. on a greater sense because everything we do is upcycled and sustainable. So what that means is that we don't use any brand new textiles. Okay. Everything we use is either upcycled, so it's something that is, you know, on its way to landfill, or something that's thrifted. Like this jacket has been thrifted, and then you know we patched it up. There's a patch at the back as well that we custom did, yep. yep. and that way we're able to put, we're able to create a circular economy and keep things going because right. you know billions of tons of clothing get thrown out every year. Yes. You know, and it's crazy how many resources it takes to make a t-shirt. Yeah. 2,700 liters of water to make a cotton t-shirt. Yeah. So if we're able to use recycled cotton instead, we're able to save water. We're also able to take something that was destined for landfill that might have taken, you know, years to biodegrade because a lot of these fabrics don't biodegrade. They mm -hmm. put a lot of polyesters, a lot of different plastics and things that will take, you know, 300 years to biodegrade. So if we're able to reuse stuff and recycle it, we're not only um, saving water, but we're also saving resources right. and saving things going into the trash. And I feel like as a consumer, you know, most of my life I wasn't aware of the true cost of clothing. Yeah. And the, there's also a social justice aspect to that too, because when you look at clothing, most of it is made outside uh, oh, I mean, if you just start with the cotton, where it's grown, yeah. most of the cotton is grown in third world countries, yes. yeah. using a tremendous amount of pesticides and, and polluting the water for the locals. Mm -hmm. Those people are making pennies on the dollar. Yeah. 
there's very high suicide rates with people growing the actual cotton with all the pesticides. Yeah. And it's and then we look at the sewing of the garments. It's it's slavery. You know, there's a lot of underage kids yeah. that are doing this. It's it's, but it's not in in the Western world. This isn't in our face. We don't look at an item and think. Oh, why is this item, you know, seven bucks? Mm -hmm. What's the true cost behind that? We just think, oh, blank tea, seven bucks. Yeah. I'm a cop and I'm aware it's going to look fresh. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But we don't think like, damn, how did how did this thing get made? Because it takes a tremendous amount of energy to make things. Yeah. So I guess that that's where the inspiration was because I've always been involved in activism on the on the, on the vegan side and just helping helping spread awareness about all the positive things people can achieve in their health and in their day-to-day -day lifestyle, you know, cutting out meat and dairy and reversing diseases. And then I was, you know, exposed to a lot of the stuff when it comes to clothing yeah. and to the fashion industry. So we wanted to make a difference. We wanted to do something positive. And it's been, you know, a great creative outlet, uh, outlet as well. We yeah. have been able to connect with other musicians as well, like yeah. Mike Dean, big supporter. Yeah. I met him randomly at the Spotify studios. We were wearing the same jacket. Yeah. You know, he's copied all of our stuff recently. Uh, Mr. Hudson I've connected with. So okay. it's crazy how, you know, clothing and sustainability has led me to meet new people in the music industry as well, people yeah. that I grew up listening to. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. And it just goes to show you that, like, music, fashion, art, it's all intertwined. Yes. You know? Yeah. So, and, and I think you can be a creative on many different levels. You know, you don't have to box yourself in. If you have ideas, go for it. Yes. Try something. Right. And that's basically what we did. And now we're, we're evolving. We're making our own. We're, we're in the process of making our own textiles now, being able to be, the, I think, one of the only people in Canada uh, spin, spinning recycled cotton. And we're, okay. we're excited of where, where that's going and yeah. how we can teach people and just make it more accessible for people to have sustainable streetwear yeah. and just sustainable lifestyle products in general so i think right. that's very important to me. to me i sound like sounds like you're so busy you're working on the different things like how do you keep your life balanced between your creative life your business yeah. everything i guess i'm busy but i'm not like busy with things i don't want to do you know what i mean yeah unless i'm doing taxes or like paperwork <laughs> that i don't want to do yeah. which i'm terrible at yeah. but everything just is so enjoyable so like if i'm spending like six to eight hours a day on the fashion stuff in the morning I don't feel like that's work. I feel like that's, you know, it's inspiring. And then I'll do another eight hours of music. Like, that's fun to me. Yeah. That's just like, I'm not just going to like sit on the couch and like, you know, I've never really gotten into playing video games or, you yeah. know, doing those types of things. Like to me, like making beats is like playing video games and, you know, writing songs is such an adventure and being able to make clothes is just so fun. It doesn't like, it doesn't feel like work, no. to be honest with you. It just yeah. feels like, you know, it's my purpose and it's, it's what's enjoyable, and if I didn't have that to do, I don't know what I would do. Yeah. So what yeah. inspires you? What inspires me the most is um, the fashion, and yeah. what inspires me is the opportunity to innovate and create something that is going to help be a solution and to problem solve. I okay. really like the challenge in being in sustainable fashion. I love the fact that like I'm trying things for the first time or ordering things that you know, we really have to figure out solutions to problems. We have to make sure that, like, these sustainable inks are going to last well on recycled garments. We have to make sure. I really like, it's just such a rush to be able to do all the research and then just see it all come to fruition. And just even, like, you know, picking a hundred of these jackets and then sourcing the hemp and yeah. printing the design and putting it all together. It, it's really nice to have a tangible product with, fashion that you can have in your hand and hold yeah. because my whole life I've been making music and that's so intangible yeah. you know you could see the streams and stuff yeah. but you, you can't, can't touch, really it. touch it yeah but I guess with music music's just like I had like a kind of like a very tumultuous childhood and music was always my, my outlet and what I saw as an, exp uh, an escape and was always like a way for me to like I, I always felt like that was like my way out of like some problems I had growing up so I've just always felt like comfortable and safe with music, uh, like, like kind of like it's like I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it. Just like it was kind of like a refuge, you know. Yeah. And I and I really enjoy the challenge of music too. It's the hardest industry, you know. Like I'm I'm in the two hardest industries to work in in the world. I'm, I'm pre it's pretty like 
from like a business perspective, <laughs> yeah. those aren't the businesses you want to get into. You yeah. know, when you look at the return of investment, especially with time, yeah. you're making less than pennies on the hour. Yeah. But I guess that's what thrills me about it is it's just like, it's a chase. You know, you're really, it's harder than making it in pro, in pro sports to make yeah. it in music. You're yeah. really up against, I mean, look at all the users they have on Splice when you think about it. Yeah. Three, five, whatever it is, three to five million users on there that are making beats. Yeah. Think about that if you're a new producer. You have literally millions of people you are up against. Competitors, and, yeah. And, and there's hundreds of thousands of songs uploaded to Spotify and Apple Music every day. Like, every day, yeah. Every day. It is a crazy industry filled with a lot of disappointment, a lot yeah. of stress. Yeah. But it's just so thrilling to go after and just such such a great feeling to know that when you do make music that people connect to, you know, that that that's gonna help somebody get through a hard time or right. that's gonna also be something that somebody really, you know, holds close to their heart because I feel like with art, if you're able to make art, it's a gift because people can really have an intimate connection with that and use it when they're going through something you know, rough or use it for motivation if they're working yeah. out or if they need to get through their day. Like a lot of people really look forward to listening to music or experiencing music. So yeah. I guess just, I just feel grateful to have the opportunity to have a platform to make it and to be able to create with such talented people. I'm like often so blown away by my peers. Yeah. You know, it just, it just inspires me so much and I'm so happy for the people from my city and the people that I've been working yeah. with for so long to see how, how big their music has gotten and it just inspires me. So do you have any bigger plans? Like what's going to be for future? Like what do you, what do you see yourself? Man, I mean, I have big dreams. Obviously there's a lot of things that I want to do. I want to write a movie like in the next decade that I have in my head. I've already written the story. Yeah. Um, there's so many things I want to do. I guess every day I'm just thankful to be able to create uh, as individuals and tastemakers yeah. at being diverse and multi-talented. And mm -hmm. one thing I feel like I messed up on as a kid was just like not honing in on an instrument enough. And if, when young kids ask me like, what should I do? I tell them, learn to play every instrument. Okay. I wish I knew how to do that. Yeah. Make yourself vital. If, if you could play every instrument and have all the technical skills, you're yeah. gonna kill it in the music industry. Do you have anything more to share? Like anything else you want to talk about? If anyone has any questions, obviously feel free to send me a tweet, whatever, Instagram whatever like get at me if you have any specific questions but yeah my my hope is that somebody watches this and is hopefully inspired thank you so much Azale.